calculus of vector valued functions. So when we talk about calculus, the first thing that comes to mind, one of the first concepts we learn is the derivative. So let's talk about derivatives and vector valued functions. So for a vector valued function, r of t is equal to x of ti plus y of tj plus z of t k. It is said to be differentiable at t if its component functions are differentiable at t. So the definition of a derivative at a point is letting uh, delta t go to zero and then r of t plus delta t minus r of t over delta t. So the derivative of r, our vector function r, vector value function r with respect to t, dr dt is equal to that. There's your limit. It should look very familiar to dy dx or df dx is equal to the limit with delta x goes to zero of f of x minus x, uh, x minus delta x minus f of x all over delta x. There's your uh, single variable calculus definition. We've just applied that to multivariable calculus here with a, with a vector value function. And so what it says above, it says that our function is differentiable if its component functions are differentiable. So applying this limit, we would look at the individual component functions. So the derivative of the first component function in the x direction i would be the derivative of this x of t function, dx with respect to t in the i direction. And the derivative of the y component function would be dy dt. And since x and y and z have the input of t, it's gonna be with respect to t. So in the z direction, dz dt. And this, so this second row, we have differential notation. And if you don't like differential notation, we're gonna see a lot of it. So feel free to ask me, but also kind of start to go sort of think about, yeah, okay, this, this kind of makes sense here, what it actually means. Um, to just briefly kind of talk about this, d dt, um, of r, like it's written over there, really means ddt. Think of ddt as like an, uh, an operation we can apply to a function. Take the derivative of our function r, our vector function r, with respect to t. Or the x dt, right there, you can think of that as, again, the derivative being an operation that we're applying to a function. Since the input's in terms of t, We'll be taking the derivative with respect to t. So the derivative with respect to t of our function x of t. All right, so now the third row down is using the so-called prime notation there, where dx dt is the same thing as x prime of ti plus y prime of tj and z prime of t k. And we could switch between standard unit normal uh, vector notation with i, j, and k and component notation in the fourth line where it's just the components of a vector written inside the vector braces notation. So all that's just playing with notation. So let's dive in. So vocabulary and notation before we go too much deeper. Um, again, R of T is our generic vector valued function there. Um, a differentiable function is differentiable if it's differentiable at all of its points in its domain. A smooth function has a continuous derivative and the derivative is not equal to zero. Notice that's a bolded zero because it's the zero vector. That means that each of the individual component functions, x of t, y of t, and z of t can be zero individually, but they're never zero simultaneously. In other words, the derivative of a vector valued function, if it's a smooth function, will never have the zero vector. Uh, last but not least, the tangent vector r prime of a is a tangent vector to the curve at the point a. Review of calc one here, you've got a function, you take the derivative at that point, the derivative tells you the slope of the tangent line to the curve at the point. So the derivative of a vector valued function gives us the tangent vector to a curve at a point. Um, Something before we visit the graph there, a unit tangent vector is notated as capital T uh, of T, because it takes an input, um, is equal to R prime of T. Well, that, as we saw above it, would give us a tangent vector at time T. And then to scale it to length, we notate it as that. What we really mean is we mean one over 
r primed of t times the vector r primed of t. But we just write it as division for a little shorthand. Okay, let's take a look at this graph. That's an example of tangent vectors to a curve. Uh, the first derivative giving us that tangent vector to a curve. So the vector vr prime below shows a tangent vector. All right, so let's uh, click play on this slider, load this thing and click play on the T slider. Looks like we've got a helix here. And as we look at this, hopefully you can see that that orange vector there, I'll just drag this whole thing up a little bit. Hopefully you can see that that orange vector is in fact a tangent vector to our curve at the point. Now, the fact that I'm letting T go backwards makes it look like it's going backwards. But as T moves forward, you can see that it's a tangent vector uh, with, and it's sort of related to the, the direction of travel along this path. All right. So properties of differentiation uh, of vector valued functions. So let R of t and S of t be two differentiable vector valued functions with capital C vector, a constant vector. In other words, it's just a vector that goes to a point. There are no variables in C. It's not one t or two minus t or anything. It's just one, two, three. A is any real number and F of t is a differentiable real valued or scalar function. F of t outputs a number, not a vector. Again, be careful with all typeset stuff. A bold, uh, bold notation represents a vector, and non-bold notation represents a scalar or a real number. All right, so properties. The derivative of a constant vector is zero, just like the derivative of a number in single variable calculus is zero. The derivative of scalar multiples for our second property. If you take a scalar multiple, a times our vector value function r of t is just the derivative r primed of t of our function r primed of t times that scalar value a. If you multiply r of t, our vector function, by a scalar function f of t, then you uh, to do that you get something that looks fairly similar to the product rule in single variable calculus f prime of t times vector r of t plus uh, f of t times r vector r prime of t. Um, if you're taking the derivative of sums of vector valued functions, just like in calc one, whoops, I'm missing a parenthesis there. Just like in calc one, you take the derivative of the individual functions being added together. If you're taking the derivative of a dot product, again, it looks similar to the product rule in calc one. The derivative of two vector valued functions being dotted together is equal to the first vector value, the derivative of the first dotted with this, the second unchanged function plus the first unchanged function dotted with the derivative of the section, second function. Similarly, the derivative of a cross product of vector functions is the derivative of the first vector function uh, crossed with the second unchanged vector function plus the first unchanged vector function crossed with the derivative of the second vector function. And last but not least here, we have the chain rule. If you have a vector valued function and you wanna take the derivative and that vector value function takes as its input a scalar function, then the, uh, oh, uh, that's a fairly important oversight here. Um, there needs to be a prime sign in there and there's not, so let's add it in red. All right, so the derivative of this looks a lot like the chain rule in single variable calculus, but it's the derivative of the vector function evaluated at the unchanged inner scalar function times the derivative of the scalar function. So those are just properties. Let's look at how to calculate some of these derivatives. So find dr dt for r of t is equal to cosine of ti plus one over four t to the third power j plus e to the t K. Okay. So dr dt means that to find the derivative of our vector function, we take the derivative of each of our 
component functions. And this I should be on the outside of that parenthesis. There we go. So derivative of cosine with respect to t is negative sine of t. The derivative of 1 fourth t to the third power is drop down the theory, multiply by 1 fourth to get 3 fourths, subtract 1 off the exponent, t to the second power, t to the second power. Uh, and then the derivative of e to the t with respect to t is e to the t. So you just take the derivative of the individual component functions. All that fancy notation really means just take the derivative of the individual pieces. Now let's go ahead and continue this example and let's find a unit, or not continue this example, sorry, let's do a second example. Let's find a unit tangent vector for this function. Uh, R of t is given by x component sine squared of t, y component 4t squared plus 7t minus 1, and z component e to the 2t power. Well, first we'll take the derivative of R of t and we'll differentiate each of the component functions. The derivative of sine of t squared is equal to, doing a quick chain rule, 2 sine of t cosine of t. Uh, derivative of the y component, 4t squared gives us 8t. Derivative of plus 7t gives us plus 7. Derivative of negative 1 gives us 0, so we don't have anything there. And then another quick chain rule, the derivative of e to the t, 2t gives us 2e to the 2t for our z component of our derivative. Now, to scale this thing down to unit length, we have to take and find the magnitude of this uh, uh, derivative of the r, r primed of t. So we square the x component under, we take under a square root the squares, the sum of the squares of the components. So we square the x component, 2 sine t cosine of t, quantity squared, plus quantity t plus 7 squared plus 2e to the 2t power all squared. Do the math on that and you get this relatively long and ugly looking square root. I kind of just wrote this example to show that they don't always come out nice and clean. There's not always something we can do. In this case that just is what we get. And so now to generate the unit tangent vector, oh I, I was fully aware it went off the screen here. And that's kind of the point with this example is not all the examples you're gonna do are this ugly. I just wanted to work one that kind of was ugly. But you take and you scale it as R of T, the derivative of R of T, and then you scale it by one over its length. And that means we're gonna divide each of the individual components by this relatively ugly magnitude of R prime of T expression. So that's differentiation of vector valued functions. Now let's take a look at integration. Uh, it's informal, it's not totally correct because it doesn't account for plus C or anything like that. But it can be helpful to think of an inter the process of integration as the inverse operation of differentiation. So when you're doing an integral, you're asking the integral of this derivative is what? In other words, what function has the integrand as its derivative? So. Applying this uh, idea and looking at the, the actual formal definition of indefinite integration for vector valued functions, we let R of t be a vector valued function, then the integral of R of t with respect to t is equal to capital R of t plus c, where capital R is any antiderivative of little r, and capital C is just any constant vector. Since we know that derivative of a constant vector is zero, it will work. Just like differentiation, we integrate r component-wise, little r component-wise. Again, informal, then not 100% correct. Uh, most students find this helpful and intuitive. When you're taking an in, when you're doing integration, you have the derivative in, as your integrand, and you're asking what function has this integrand as its derivative. Since we're going to integrate component-wise, we just do that with the individual components. And really, when you're integrating component-wise, we're just applying calc one, single variable calculus rules. So here's our first example, the integral from zero. I'm sorry, this, um, I haven't introduced the definition. Uh, yeah, I went two slides, there we go, that's the problem. 
Okay, so our first example, the integral of r of t dt, where r is equal to cosine of t i plus 1j minus 2t k. So when we integrate vector valued functions, we integrate the individual component functions. So I'm just going to kind of, in practice, we don't actually do this this second row here, but I'm trying to be very, very thorough in presenting the, the concept. So we're going to integrate the x component function. So integral of cosine of d dt in the i direction is going to give us, well, cosine has what derivative, cosine is the derivative of what function? Sine of t. All right, next we have uh, the j direction. So the integral of 1 dt in the j direction, well, the integral of 1 gives us just t. And last but not least, minus the integral of 2t for the z direction, the k component, uh, gives us minus t squared. Okay. Now, remember, we're doing an indefinite integral, so we have to remember to tack on plus any constant function. If you think of c, uh, the, the constant vector c as cxi plus cyj plus czk, then you could write this out component-wise and distribute it out. But it's common. This is, this is just fine. For the vast majority of what we're going to do, this is just fine. However, uh, we will get into situations where this will be helpful. OK, so now definite integration. I'm not going to introduce a separate um, definition or anything, because again, we just integrate component-wise, and since each component function is a single variable function, we're just applying calc one skills here. We're, uh, or we're applying, we're just integrating with respect to one variable. Uh, and then we're just evaluating those from zero to pi. So this is the same math we just did. The only difference here is on this line where we take and evaluate each of the resulting integrals of the component functions to come up with our final answer. Once you get comfortable with this, like I said, it, oftentimes we don't actually take the time to write this out like that and break it out. We just draw the integral out in front, and then we integrate each of the component functions on the way and bring along their unit, uh, standard unit vector notation as well, and then do it all kind of like that. And that's it for an introduction to calculus with vector valued functions.